Hello people who cannot sit at home. Thank you so much for being here. So this video is very dear to my heart. This is my absolute favorite 11 antique spots. If you have been following me for any amount of time, you probably noticed that I love vintage, antique, anything of that sort. And at first I wanted to rate all of these places, kind of like, you know, place number one, place number two. But then I realized at different points in my life, different places were the best for me. So I don't think it's fair to rate them. They're all amazing. So let's jump right into it. Let me show you my favorite antique places. Let's go. So the first place I want to talk to you about is Nostalgic Journey. And as I mentioned before, I don't want to be rating all of these places because they're all amazing in their own right. But I do want to highlight certain elements so that you understand what is the best thing about each of these antique places. So a Nostalgic Journey, definitely one of my favorite places. This is in Peterborough. I would say about an hour and a half from Toronto, but it's so worth it. So first of all, you have this Star Wars guy. I don't know who he is. Uh, please comment down below if you know who that is. So that is at the entrance. And then you have this huge area with variety of different vendors. There's about, it says over, over 25 vendors, but I think there's far more. Specifically why I love this this section this section right here they have i don't know maybe about five vendors that are all about home decor so if you're into home decor and specifically if you're into like anthropology hippie um kind of 70s home decor you have to go here you will love it here from paintings to furniture to just different knickknacks everything is so stylish and worn and beautiful I, when I'm here, uh, it's my heaven. Uh, that This is the exact style, like the home decor style that I adore. So definitely, if you're anything like me, you have to go. Uh, the prices are actually pretty decent. I mean, some things, of course, are more expensive than others. But I would say the prices are reasonable for the quality and the rarity that you're getting. And other than home decor, there's just other vendors of this place. Uh, lots of interesting kind of like pop culture elements, tons of vintage phones. Everything is on one floor. There is no basement or top floor, but it is really like big, wide. So when, when I'm here, I spend easy two hours here. Uh, you can probably spend more time. So over here is a cheese cutter for almost $600, but it is definitely very unique. And then I always love anything Barbie. This, I think, is from 60s or 70s. I'm not sure. It's kind of like the dream house over there that kind of expands. And Barbie and Ken over there. Um, yeah, I love I love things like that. They also have a number of cutlery, silver silverware, essentially. And I think a lot of them are priced per a number of them so that you can get a few of the pieces. I love this chic shaver. It has like a little jewel on it. There's also a number of clothing, vintage clothing. I wouldn't say there's a lot of clothing, but there's definitely, I would say about five or so vendors that have jewelry and clothing. Next up, we have another absolutely amazing place. So this is one of a kind antique mall. This is located in Woodstock, which is, I would say, about uh, two hours west of Toronto. But I will guarantee you, because this is, I think, three full floors, you can spend a whole day there. You can literally spend here from like the time it opens, which I think is about 10 o'clock. Do check it out online till however late it closes. This place is ridiculous. Go here when it's so-so weather, when the weather is not great outside, so perfect for winter time, perfect for a rainy day when you don't know what to do. Trust me, you will love this. This is an insanely amazing place. The amount of vendors, I don't even know, I'm not even gonna guess. It literally has everything. For any kind of person that is into anything, you will find it here. And if you're not into anything, you will probably become into something. <laughs> They even have over there wood, if you need slices of gorgeous wood pieces for like a table or something. They have a number of vendors with Barbies. We've seen them throughout, I would say in the beginning, like on the main floor. And I remember them being on the second floor. I am a huge Barbie fan and this was, they had some really rare pieces, really rare Barbie pieces. And just a lot of toys, 
Uh, here's another Malibu Barbie, I think. And so there is, of course, the Barbies that you can just touch and look at that are like, you know, $35. But then there's one stand that is by, it's very close to the checkout. Over here is uh, one of the dolls. This is one of the earlier ones. The price of it is 210 which is pretty actually decent. But this one is 459 also one of the earlier Barbies. So you can definitely see that these are in mint condition. This is a collector's piece. Basically, if you know, you know. Over here, I'm showing you like a goth booth, which was very cool. It had all of the all of the things that if you're into goth uh, and kind of emo style, you will find. Loving the signs, loving the uh, fashion. In general, I love antique malls for this kind of thing. It's almost like a museum of the most rare items from historic to more modern and you will always find something. In terms of purchasing things, of course, you know what you're looking for, right? If you're a collector of something, you will be looking for that. I don't usually collect, so I'm kind of walking around seeing things. I think my most favorite is maybe jewelry pieces, like earrings and brooches. So I do usually pick up at least one or two on each of my trips. But definitely have in mind what is it that you're collecting and looking for, because you could potentially end up with a lot of stuff. So the place number three is Aberfoyle. This is an amazing place. Oh my gosh, I love this market so much. But there's a caveat. So the issue with this is that it is only on Sundays and it is only on in the summertime. This is located about two hours uh, west of Toronto. So it is also fairly far. It's not far from actually the uh, the Woodstock location, the one of a kind that I was just showing you before. But oh my gosh, it's such a beautiful market. Most of it is outdoors, so you have that outdoor feel. If you follow any of the American uh, bloggers and, and antique influencers, it's a very American thing to have like an outdoor markets in there. So this is pretty much the only one that we have here in, in Ontario that I know of. If there is another one, let me know. And most of the time that I'm there in the summer, they even have musicians playing and there's also snacks and hot dogs that you can get. So it also becomes a whole experience. For sure, you will need at least three hours there. It is such a fun time. And here are a few more items from the market. Definitely a lot of them are very unique. I love these vintage Toronto uh, postcards and cat dishes. I'm regretting not getting that because I'm cat obsessed and that was really cool. There were also... Uh, gas masks. Not sure if they're in good condition, but they're pretty old, but it was pretty cool to see. And they also have a section with all of these like letters if you want to spell something out. They're not the same type, which makes it even cooler, I think, if you want to have like your name spelled out or something. And this is how it looks uh, when you're walking. And there's definitely a number of furniture, a number of foil, some gorgeous, gorgeous pieces. The place number four is Sanctuary Antique. This is very unique. This is on a smaller side, and the whole uniqueness of it is that it's inside a church, an uh, old church. Mainly what they sell are furniture, and most of the things over here are fairly high-priced, high-end, uh, really well curated, but it's the ambiance of it that I think I fell in love with. And the owners are also really lovely. Next up, we have Antiques on 48. This is going north, I would say about an hour, maybe hour and 15 if you go north. So this place I absolutely adore. It is two floors. There's a main floor, there's a top floor. The most recent time we were here was during Christmas time. So they had a bunch of vintage decorations. Uh, there was really gorgeous earrings, really beautiful glasses. And also the last time I was there, I saw that they have the display of the uranium glass. I am obsessed with uranium glass. I do not collect it because it is technically radioactive, but oh my gosh, I love it so much. And I especially love when the antique stores do like a little display so that you see it. I think some of the glass is also Vaseline. I think the yellowy is the Vaseline glass and uranium is more of a green one. I could be wrong. And over here is another kind of cute display of miniature uh, musical instruments. The most beautiful vintage jewelry. This is, of course, a little on the pricier side, but look at that quality and uh, the color is gorgeous. 
And now let's head to number six, Cookstown Antique Market. I also absolutely love this market. This is about an hour, maybe even under an hour from Toronto. It is in Cookstown and they also have the uranium setup display, which is so lovely to check out. In here you can touch things and look at the prices. It's okay to touch it, but I don't know if I would want to have it. Uh, though I do love the UV light and, you know, everything glowing green. I think it's really cool. The thing about this Cookstown location is that it's in this gorgeous barn. I think the barn was relocated from somewhere from like Nova Scotia or something. There's like a whole history about it. And again, two levels, absolutely amazing vendors, really well priced. Uh, there's again Barbie collection. I'm surprised I actually don't have as much footage of these of this because it's one of my favorite antique places. They also have actually really good amount of clothing and jewelry. Number seven is Castle Antiques Cafe. This is all the way in Halliburton, but it's so close to my heart. I love this place so much. Uh, so it is about, I'd say, two and a half, three hours from Toronto, north of Toronto. What they have is they have a cafe and they join cafe together with antiques. And both the antiques and the food are actually really high quality and good. And I have so much fun when I visit them. I wanted to tell you about my new weekend getaways road trip journal. This just recently came out on Amazon. It's one of my books. It's all about weekend getaways and I'm going to link all of the information down below. And I also have, of course, my regular Ontario road trip journal, which is the spring and summer for daytime tripping and my fall winter if you would like to go on a day trip in fall or winter so number eight is antiques curiosities and oddities this is in hamilton so i would say about an hour is it hour uh west of toronto in hamilton and um i don't know what i felt about this place i'm gonna say i did not love it because it's so scary <laughs> but i know that there's a lot of people who will love this that's why i'm including this here um as you can see, everything in here is very unique. So there's definitely an element of taxidermy. There are definitely a lot of skulls. Uh, they even have this skull. I, I don't even want to know if this is real or not. Uh, they definitely have a lot of just like bones and things like that. But they also have interesting kind of furniture pieces. And I almost felt like some of the items were from the, like a movie props. So that is also interesting. They even had like unusual candies and warm snacks and owl puke and stuff like that. So if you're looking for a gag gift, this is definitely the place. Number nine, Hamilton Antique Mall. This is an interesting location because I have heard so many amazing things about this place. Only for me to go there finally, after many years of actually hearing about it, and uh, I felt that it was very average. So the reason why I'm recommending it here is that skip the first floor. This is, I'm just showing you the first floor. I didn't find a single thing that interests me, uh, other than Barbies, of course. I love my Barbies. Uh, but what happened is if you go on the second floor, things start to be more interesting. You get like a bit more vinyl, you get a bit more like vintage cameras and things like that. I guess everyone's definition of good antique is different, but it just felt that the main floor had very similar, ununique items. I don't know how to describe it. Tell me if you felt the same way or if you don't agree, also let me know. But what I also want to highlight about the Hamilton Antique Mall is that on the third floor, there are a number of really cool vendors. So I did not even make it to the third floor because I was tired from walking the main floor. So definitely my suggestion right away go to the second floor and the third floor. Third floor I'm going to insert a couple of really cool ladies that are over there because I later on found them on Instagram and I was surprised that I didn't see them before. And I was of course very disappointed that I didn't make it to the third floor. So don't make my mistake, make sure to go to the third floor. So number 10 amazing vintage place is Got About Vintage. This is in pretty much downtown Toronto. I guess you could say this is in the beaches. It's uh, on Queen Street. And it's a fairly small place. It's only two floors and just spatially it's very small. But they have all of these little cubicles that you can open and look at and just kind of go through all of these shelvings and uh, see all of the things. And they're very big on clothing. So this is for sure a clothing secondhand, but they also have smaller knickknacks. I loved spending time in there and just searching for things. I think I got a brooch in there. It was really cool. So 11 is Southworks Antiques. This place is located in Cambridge, which is about an hour and a half west of Toronto. So the first half, as you walk in, you will see these like new, but they are vintage 
uh, kitchen appliances. So you have the stoves and things like that, which I found very cool. They also had like a lot of Monopoly and games like that. If you're looking for like a really cool Monopoly present, they have it all. And then they have a uh, other section kind of like right next to it, but it's fairly separate. And that is just an antique place. I found some really lovely handkerchiefs and really beautiful Christmas vintage ornaments. In general, it's a, just a really nice uh, antique kind of market. But I think my favorite part was all of the vintage kitchen appliances. I hope you enjoyed this video and all of the places. Let me know what you thought about this. If there are any other antique places that you think are just as amazing, make sure to write them down below. I will definitely check them out. Maybe I'll do another video. Thank you so much for being here. Please subscribe, like, and share if you enjoy my videos, and I will see you next time. Bye.